more in the passing of unfortunate incidents where you know just certain certain children weren't able to be here with us but man unless you are a family member of these beautiful babies are supporter this website is none of your business and the rules are clear that inappropriate language and postings will not be tolerated all IP addresses will be investigated further yeah that's another thing I know for a fact that a website like this has definitely seen its share of um, controversial content and I am not directing this there or talking about it but this is not something that you see that often and I, I it, it's insane to see like this looks like it's somewhat of an older kind of web page where a lot of the stuff here is sort of HTML images that are just put up it's it's crazy to see and I don't want to dwell on it for too long because this is a level of um, this is a level of content where you don't I'm not here to disrespect these people I just it's just it's listed there as disturbing content it is disturbing to an extent but it's also like, it's almost sort of like an emotional cleanse looking at this. This is genuine grief and sorrow here. And I think when it comes from a genuine place like this, that especially considering that it's, you know, the, the subject material, it's something that I want to be more respectful of. So I'm going to close the page now. The, me the message is across. A website like this does exist, and it's meant for the people who it, who it falls under. You know, this isn't meant for everybody to come through, and we definitely shouldn't be desecrate in this place with any of the fucked up shit that we do around here but it's something to be documented for the purpose of just listing stuff that just isn't it's not the norm stuff like this isn't the norm and i can see its purpose this has a genuine purpose mourning is something that we all have to go through mourning is something that i've gone through we've all had family members who pass away and we want those moments to be respected so i'm going to back away from this and respect that moment but we can definitely take a look at some of the other stuff that's here um if you guys want to if you feel the fucking need to definitely drop an f in the chat show a little bit is that is that disrespectful just from the fact that that's a meme well i'm not coming from it from a disrespectful perspective <laughs> disrespectful perspective um i'm asking you to leave an f in the chat from a place of genuine concern respect and um yeah just F in the chat, man. But for now, let's keep it moving to the next topic. This one looks kind of interesting. I think I've seen a couple of these before. This is apparently final statements of death row inmates of Texas. Some of these are really fucked up. Now, I feel like I have looked at this before, but Texas in general has a bit of a questionable history when it comes to treatment of criminals and such. Considering that these are people who have made horrible decisions and destroyed other people's lives for the sake of benefiting their own, I, this is not coming from a perspective of where you have to show as much hardcore respect. Sure, these men slash women have died, but they have either died due to them fucking up someone else, so it comes from a perspective of they deserved it. Or who knows? The thing that always disturbs me, guys, and I don't know if you agree with this sentiment, but one of the things that scares me is someone being prosecuted for a crime that they had actually nothing to do with. It's not as frequent nowadays as it was back then, but it still does happen every now and then, even to certain contexts that actually, you know, like, it's, it's there. At some point, even in the last 10 years, there's an unfortunate person who has been put through the entire legal system who actually didn't do it. It has to be a lower percentage, but back in the day, especially when uh, America was going through more of its rough patches with racism, bigotry, and prejudice, it has gone down. And who knows, maybe we're gonna see some of those cases this time around. Some of you might've seen this already, but if you have, you're about to see me go through it right now. This has no need for us to um, censor anything. We're gonna be taking a look at this. So there's a couple of people here. This is, is this up to date? Is this up to like 2018 or maybe it goes up to like 2006? I don't know. I would like to see if this is something like recent. If we're looking at some of these ages, a lot of them seem to be anywhere from 30 to 60. Is there someone here that's young? The death sentence is extreme. Now, do I agree with it? I mean, that's a debatable topic. It, it, if, the, if the crime is truly egregious enough, maybe. Uh, Etika, your mic isn't working? Yeah. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Is it, it's up to date? The game is real, said this list is kept up to date. So I would like to see if there's a way for us to like know. Execution 546. Five, maybe this will tell us some more information when we open up the page here. So this is death row information about someone who goes by the name of Anthony Shore. 
date of birth. Um, he was born the 6th, excuse me, um, the 25th of June, 1962. Date received 2004. And then the date of offense was 1992. He was on there for a while. Damn. What did he do? What did this guy do? Shore kidnapped a 16-year-old Hispanic female and sexually assaulted her, causing her death. So he's human garbage. And he deserves anything that happens to him. Shore then dumped the victim's body in a field. Multiple people. A 9-year-old female causing her death. Dumped the body behind an abandoned commercial building. So what did this human trash have to say in his last moments? Now I'm curious. He says, this was his last statement before he was executed in Texas. Date of execution, January 18th, 2018. He was killed in Texas yesterday. Wow. This is insane. I didn't think it was that. It's up to date legitimate bro we're seeing this man he took his last breaths yesterday holy shit what did he say this is crazy i'd like to take a moment to say that i'm sorry no amount of words could ever undo what i have done to the family of the victims i wish i could undo the past it is what it is though god bless all of you i will die with a clear conscience I've made my peace. There is no others. I would like to wish a happy birthday to Barbara Carroll. Today is it. I would especially like to thank those who have helped me. You know who you are. God bless everybody until we meet again. I'm ready, Warden. Fuck. This is insane. Yesterday, bro. I, I mean, you... I knew the death sentence was still in practice in some states, but it's sort of like surreal to see that it's actually going down. This is an official website. This is a, 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 a state-run website, tx.us. This is definitely legitimate. Nothing fucking f fabricated here. He was a pedophile, not just, he was a murderer, a pedophile. This dude was basically one of the worst kinds of humans that could exist. Absolute fucking trash. Why is your voice different? I had a little bit of a cold, so maybe I'm like experiencing some side effects from that. Nigga left with fake respect. Damn, the man thinks God is gonna love him. Bro, what disturbs me, I don't know. Guys, let me know in the chat if there's anything you read about this which disturbs you besides, you know. But I mean, what he said is, I will die with a clear conscience. We didn't even get to see everything that this guy actually did. In Harris County, he kidnapped a 15-year-old white female, strangled her to death with a cord. He then dumped the body behind a Ninfa's restaurant. And then on top of it, he kidnapped a 21-year-old Hispanic girl, assaulted her and strangled her to death with a cord, dumped the victim's body. How can you say you, how in God's name can you say you die with a clear conscience? This isn't, even if it was a one-time thing, that would be horrible. But he did this one, two, three, four, five in different times. He's a sick bastard, and I, you know what, man, I know this is controversial, but God, man, God bless the person who put this fucking dog under. He needed to go down. This is insane. Why did he do it? For him to say that, you know, it's, my family there is six boys and three girls, that includes me. Uh, I'm the middle child, fifth uh, oldest, and, wait, excuse me, I'm the middle child, fifth oldest, and fifth youngest. There was going to be a 10th child that was right after me, but there was a miscarriage. And yeah, it's that, that kind of stuff is extremely, it's extremely sensitive to talk about. Who knows? Like there's plenty of people that I know have probably gone through similar experiences and God knows that I am in no position to talk about. That's why I, I went off that page because times that page, because it just, that was something that I don't have the right to even mention. I've not been through something like that, but I can't imagine the pain that someone who experiences something like that goes through. So, you know, God bless you to all those people who have experienced stuff like that. And, you know, hopefully they're taking good care of themselves mentally to be able to cope and move onward with stuff like that. But Lil Chu, it's, you know, it's emotionally cleansing for you to share something like that with all of us. I know that probably took a lot out of you to do. So thank you.
for doing so, man. Uh, I mean, even though this is a stream which is like going through some of the more obscure parts of humanity, but you know, I'm gonna embrace it all and say that that that's something very, uh, very sensitive. And I wish you the best. Well, then again, you're probably good, but you know, you know, definitely take care of yourselves mentally. That's something extreme. But all right, man. Uh, this is actually interesting. As crazy as it is to read this kind of stuff, it's also sort of eye-opening. What other, especially knowing that it, it's up to date so much. Hold on a second. We have a comment coming in from Nintendo Sony Freak. And it'll let you, once again, thank you. T Colossal Torrent also sponsored me just now. He says, I've seen that shit happen in real life. It sucks ass. Way back in 2013, um, I saw someone die 20 feet away from me, but it wasn't anyone I knew um, in from it's from a public bus riding transportation crazy stuff. I don't know guys um, If we're talking wild stuff like this, and you know, this is an extreme stream. <laughs> this is an extreme stream um, but I Have I ever experienced seeing like someone lose their life like that in such a visceral way right up front no i have not but there have well in terms of like someone else taking someone's life there was something that i did witness a few years ago though man all right so i'm going to share a story with you guys and considering the theme of the stream it might be a little bit extreme am i why am i busting bars here right now but this is a story of something i experienced while i was on the train subway i was riding home from school um, everything was cool. It was me and the boys, and we, you know, well, they, they had gotten off the train, right? This is 100, okay, once again, I don't think I have to say this, but this is a legitimate story. What I'm about to tell you is completely real. <laughs> don't say Iceman in the chat. Now is not the time for jokes, okay? But I was in the train, and, uh, I was sitting across, right across from this older dude, and... As he was in the chair, I shit you not, out of nowhere, the dude, he was, he was just sitting there, you know, doing whatever. He had his headphones in. And this was probably in 2000 and I would say six or no, no, maybe not six, maybe it was seven. 2007, guy on the train, older dude, visually older dude, black dude. And at some point, his eyes rolled back into his head completely, just white pupils, and he just... Boom, keeled over, right? And then not only that, I guess I guess at first seeing his body go through those motions, no one thought anything of it. They just thought he was sleeping. But I was looking directly at the guy. So, you know, I saw his eyes go back. Maybe people from other angles didn't see that. Maybe other people just thought that he leaned over. But he leaned with no resistance. And sure enough, since he didn't have resistance, the dude, after he leaned over, he just, bam, fell completely on his face like you know if you fall and you know you're there you put your hands out to stop yourself you know you don't hurt some of your like more sensitive parts like your face your head or anything dude fell boom nothing and bro as soon as that happened everyone started screaming they were like sir are you okay you know like everybody was like losing their minds they were like hey listen man are you okay people were like pumping his chest me from my perspective it was shocking as hell and i was like frozen from the whole thing i don't i don't know man like it, it just it just hit me from an angle of like yo some people had pulled out their cell phones they are recording the guy and um i would I, it was just like for me everything froze and eventually the train stopped at the next station it was at grand army plaza station in brooklyn new york and they everybody the, the train didn't move they were like yo this train is out of service um they were calling the ambulance they were trying to come in there but to be honest with you, man, as I was looking at the situation frozen, I was looking at the dude and he was gone, man. There was nothing left. He, he like he I don't know what it was like. Was that considered like a heart attack? It's a dark story. I know, man. And, you know, I, like I said, this isn't something that I would normally talk about, which is why I waited until later on to share this kind of experience with you guys. And I mean, I know it can be considered sort of extreme, but, you know, I have somewhat of a more mature theme to my channel, an older demographic. This is something I can share with you guys. And it was like, wow, man, he was gone. K.O. There was nothing left. He never regained consciousness. He was like, it was just gone. And he never moved or anything. And then sure enough, I get home, turn on the news, and bam, 
right there speaking about this guy who passed away in the train. Um, I was talking about the delays in the train too. It was nuts to see from like for all that playing back. I wasn't on the camera because as soon as the train stopped and they were like, hey, listen, this is out of service. Get off. I didn't stick around for too long. I just got up. Uh, I was I was trying to stick around to see a little bit, maybe to see if the guy would come to. But after like three minutes, like you can just see it. Like they, you could see it. They, they turned him over. They were like giving him um, CPR and it, nothing, nothing was hitting. And yeah, I just left at that point. And it was like, man, I walked home the rest of the day. Like for me, back in 2017, I was 17 years old. I, it, it was kind of shocking, man, you know? Like, that was the only time I had really seen someone lose their life. I've been in situations where people have shot guns, and, like, you see, you hear gunshots, you see people shooting. Um, while I was living in Coney Island at some point, I had witnessed a gunfight go down. I actually fucking recorded it to me. <laughs> That's fucked up. But I didn't see anyone get hit. I didn't see anyone fall or anything, you know? You just know, okay, niggas is busting their guns, you know? Like, that's like a... That's something that you see a lot in, in, in the hood and all that. But man, to witness someone lose their life in like in real time is just like, fuck. But yeah, that's just an experience that I had. You know, I mean, I, I mean, it's not something that I'm trying to like talk to to glorify or something. I don't know if you guys have had similar experiences, but you know, it was just shocking for me, um, especially being like so young and seeing it. I feel like if I saw something like that now, since I'm a little bit more hardened, I mean, it was still, it was still, it would still be shocking to see, but you know, hey. Um, someone said, I've seen a kid um, hold a gun just walking to a bus stop. You know, shocking stuff like that. There's some moments that make you wonder exactly where someone's humanity has gone to, you know? It's, uh, I, I, I thank, I thank whoever it is to thank that I have not witnessed anyone get, like, actually shot. I've just seen people shoot. I've seen people, I've heard people shoot, but I've never seen someone just, bam, this shot right there. Uh, it, it sounds like a grisly thing, man. But uh, how old is Etika? I'm going to be uh, 28 in May uh, in May this year. But, yeah, I was, uh, excuse me, 20, 17 and 2017. I mean, 2007. I mean, 2007, my bad. I, I got the dates messed up. My bad if I gave a little uh, verbal typo right there. But... Yeah, that was just a story of um, some crazy shit that I had experienced, man. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have experienced anything similar. If you have, let me know in the chat, man. Um, I'm Etika2017. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Yeah, I fucked up with the dates. Um, do you still have the recording of the shooting in that I witnessed? Do I still have that recording? You know what's interesting? I know if I had a couple of people here that were there, like, like there's some people there that can definitely vouch for me. Like, we, I witnessed that. I, I recorded that shit. I don't know why, like, it was just such a wild experience for me, and it was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna record it. Let me see if I have it saved up on my computer. I probably don't. Considering that I have gone through a couple of hard drives to get to this computer right here, I most likely don't have it saved. Maybe it's saved in my Google Photos account, but I think I have to kind of look through a lot of stuff. And even if I, I it didn't show anybody getting hit, but let me describe what was in that video. You see these two dudes walking up the street and out of nowhere, they duck behind a car and you see one of them with a gun and he's just shooting. Only one of them had a gun, I think. He's just bam, 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 shooting, 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 bam, bam, bam. And then he just walks up the street as casual as it can be. Like, I don't understand it, man. Like, if I was, if I was recently involved in a fucking gunfight, I trust me, there will be no walking casually or strutting like I'm a cool dude. I'd be running for the I'd be running for the remainder of my time anywhere in the vicinity, dog. It's like I wouldn't even be caught in a fucking gunfight, first off. But second off, if I happen to find myself caught in a damn gunfight, because you know, I like I, I mentioned this before, eventually, just to protect myself and my future family or whatever, I do want to at least have a firearm somewhere for me to access, but it wouldn't be something I walk around with or whatever. But I mean, it's like, bro. How do you bust your gun at people across the street from behind a car and, you know, nobody gets hit or whatever? What do you do? You just call it off like, oh, okay, you know, we're good. And you just start strolling down the block? Bro, I, I don't know how. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Etika, there's a dude behind you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real funny. How can it be someone behind me? The only thing behind me is Undertale, nigga. Will this kill me? Most likely. 
I don't know, bro. I feel as if like that was just a show of niggas trying to act all hard and shit. Oh yeah, I'm so about nigga. Okay, okay, get your street creds, bro. You can have your street creds. I'll have my life. <laughs> uh, anyways, let me see here. We, he, we hold on a second. Sway one wait. Sway one way saying I took part in a school shooting when I was around 12 years old. The kid was visibly mad and said the same words before he began spraying bullets. It's Nerf. <laughs> that is horrible, bro. That is fucking horrible, bro. You shouldn't be making jokes about stuff like that. That's that's too fucking you, you edgy as fuck, bro. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Yes, that's a good. That's a, yeah. You, 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 all right. So you got me to smile. Is that was that your fucking goal, bro? Was that what you wanted to go for? Good one. Hold on a second. We have um Parker, Parker R T J with a forty dollar donation. Thank you very much for the misty love, man. Trust me, it definitely is appreciated around here. I love seeing the original waifu. I once had a buddy get killed by Chicago police. A couple of years back, crazy stuff. It got all over the news. Paul O'Neill was his name, if you want to see it. Someone in the stream had someone, a friend of theirs, killed by police brutality in Chicago. Paul O'Neill. This sounds too crazy to even believe. The shooting of Paul O'Neill, July 28th, 2016. Chicago police shot and killed Paul O'Neill in Chicago South Shore neighborhood on July 28, 2016. The following videos are from the fatal shooting. They were released by the Independent Police Review Authority on August 5, 2016. The following videos contain graphic content and strong language. An officer's body cam video shows a reportedly stolen Jaguar speeding by and the officer firing. Going towards 7-4. Okay. Body cam video from a second officer shows him also firing. Dashcam video shows the second officer firing. Okay. They just shot so... I don't understand. I mean, we don't have context here. So, as easy as it is to judge, but I can at least say for what this video shows, that was one hell of an extreme to take. Unless they were told... This guy has a fucking gun. He's killed people before. I don't know, like, but then again, we don't have any of that context right now. From At least from just watching the video for what it is. That's the only perspective I can give. And from that perspective, I can say that looks extreme. Like, so excessive. Just busting shots at the car as it goes by. That shit looked like a GTA 5 moment. Let's see what else happens. Etika is Logan Paul. Context means a lot with stuff like this. Trust me. I know that. And I'm not jumping to the judgment that this is some fucking... I'm, I'm not jumping to the extreme judgment just yet. But someone had donated saying that this was their friend who was unfortunately slain in this incident. I mean, I don't think it shows the full thing. It can't. I mean, this is otherwise be on a shock website. But let's just see what happens. There's a lot of footage showing both officers took shots. Okay, it shows it colliding with the Jaguar in the next block. Oh, 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 oh. 
O'Neal then fled. So he didn't he didn't pass away from the shots there. He was okay. He just crashed the car and then got out and ran. It's such an extreme measure to take, though. Just for... A young nigga got it bad because he's brown. <laughs> Someone said my man had a five-star wanted level. That's crazy, bro. The way that they're treating it, it looks like something like that. Damn! God damn! This shit is crazy! The shooting of O'Neal is not shown on video, but body cam video from the first officer captured in the aftermath of the backyard. Alright, I'm gonna watch this. I don't know if this shows anything graphic. Okay, nothing graphic shown so far. Give me over, give me over. Fuck, I can't, I can't. The dash, like, the body cam footage being involved is sort of like, I'm glad this is a practice that they exercise in a lot of police departments now. Like, dash cam footage, or I keep saying dash cam, but body cam footage is, is almost a necessity, especially to get to the bottom of situations like this. This is so extreme. Hands behind your back. So he was still alive at this point. He shot at them? He shot at the officers? If he shot at them, then. Additional ambulance for a PO. Additional ambulance for an injured PO. This is extreme. Not hit, but he's hurt. Huh? Yeah. You? He shot? And they shot at us too, right? I shot at the car after it almost hit you. I'm a fast my fucking bitch. Why are y'all posting five stars in the chat? Huh? Wow. It's unfortunate, man. Yeah, it was just one guy. Bullets he whizzing. He said bullets were whizzing. whizzing. Body cam video from the second officer shows the dying O'Neal being handcuffed. Okay, this is this is getting a little extreme. I'm not going to be showing this part on camera. All right, guys. But I I just just to get the full understanding of this i mean the link was there if you guys really want to look at it but you know i'm about to look at this myself i'm this isn't something for everybody all right as a matter of fact what i'm going to do is even mute the um wait a minute alex Leshuga saying i was on vacation once in barbados and my tour guide just fell over and died i saw the life leave his eyes a shopkeeper just placed tinfoil over the guy and left him keep it real man damn that's how it is sometimes, bro. Like, I mean, you hear about how heart attacks and the like work. And, you know, I, I feel like... <laughs> as crazy as it is to make this comparison, and I'm not doing so for comedic purposes, but considering shows like Death Note, which kind of show a lot of the characters going through heart attacks and stuff, you feel as if, like, you... Okay, I'm used to it. Like, I've seen it. But then in real life, you realize how extreme something like that can actually be. And it's it's... I don't know what that guy in the train like suffered from, but man, he something like that for a tour guide to just go out that, that's crazy, bro. I mean, I don't feel like I don't feel like something like that well, it can be it can be mentally scarring. I don't feel like I was too mentally scarred from it. It was just scary in the moment, like damn. And you know, it just makes you think sometimes. It makes you think a little bit hard, bro. The only if anything, this makes you realize that you got, you got to really live life, bro, and take care of yourself too. A lot of health problems. You know, this is something that 
Uh, my family's had a lot of experience. A lot of health problems can be avoided if you just take the proper care and um, make sure that you can stay consistent with whatever medicines you have to take, injections, pills, to ensure that you are fit to survive, you know, diabetes. That's one thing that I'll say. I have an aunt who is a diabetic. Um, I have a lot of family members who are diabetic. And a lot of people, unfortunately, with that condition, if they don't keep up with their regular injections or um, their regular pills, unfortunately, they wouldn't be able to survive on their own. But my aunt is like, what, 70 something and still alive and kicking it and happy. And, you know, and that's because she keeps up with everything that the doctors tell her. She takes those injections. She, she puts those pills down. She does whatever she needs to to ensure that her body is completely supplemented with the stuff that it needs. And that's something that a lot of people don't do. A lot of people don't maintain the upkeep, even when they have conditions and um, predisposed stuff. And they, they have to. They have to. Because if you don't, like if you have asthma and you don't take your necessary, um, your necessary pump or pills or whatever, it will take you out. Diabetes will take you out if you don't keep up with those injections. So, unfortunately, a lot of people don't, and that's what usually takes them out. But nowadays, medicine is so advanced, and there's so many ways to keep yourself well that it's sad when someone doesn't do that, and you know they could have and still would have been there, you know? And I've, I've, I've experienced that personally. EJ Lennon saying, this past summer, and I, there was a donation that came in earlier. I'm going to take a look at that. Um, this past summer, I was working at the Douglaston Club in Queens. Not, is, that, is that in New York, Queens, you mean? And I saw an elderly man fall face first down a short flight of stairs. It was terrifying to actually experience. He's lucky that he didn't die. Face first down a flight of stairs, being elderly, I know damn well that was not something he was prepared for. That's something to be conscious of too. I mean, if any of you guys have, you know, older grandparents or something, hope, I mean, if, if you're close to your older grandparents, that's always a concern, you know? Now. I'm even starting to feel that for my aunt. I mean, she's not really an aunt. She's like a family friend, but she's my godmother and she's been there for years. And, you know, it's one, it's something to see as you get older, the, the family members that would be there for you when you were younger, they're getting older too, you know? I, I saw my mom the other day and, you know, like, you know, she still looks young as hell, but you see some gray hairs, you know, I see some gray hairs on me. I, I see my mom, you know, even though I, I'm still, a, I'm still, a, I, I, I'm still a dashing young man, but I mean, you know, it, it's, it's like things age, you know, and it's like, wow, it immediately makes you want to appreciate the time that you have with some of your older family members. And God knows I want to, man. I love my aunt to death. And I, you know, I, I want to be in a position where I can like travel with her and do stuff with her, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm getting all sentimental and stuff. My bad if I'm seeming like Etika emotional network or whatever. But, you know, this is a this is a this is a more um, serious theme stream. You know, we're talking about real topics here. This isn't just about memes and laughs and jokes and fucking Ugandan knuckles, nigga. We're talking about real world shit, real life shit. We're being real right now. I, I think it's actually refreshing to talk about stuff like this. EJ, thank you for sharing that story. I mean, it, it, it sounds so extreme. It sounds so crazy to say thank you for putting something like that out there. But man, to, for you guys to share experiences like that, I mean, that's kind of insane. You know, I'm just glad that there's a, a, at least a lesser amount of people around. So, you know, it's not, oh, we got, is it, we have 9,000 viewers, bro. 9,000 viewers. All right. So, you know, okay, 8,800. Never mind. All right. So, you know, we have a few more people here. Thank you for joining me tonight. The stream is taking a bit more of a um, wild turn, but hey, it's it, it's all good. This is kind of what we were going for, man. Real sad hours. <laughs> all right. So what I'm going to do is take a look at the remainder of this video and I'll just give you guys what my thoughts are from what I see. I will not be sharing the contents with you dudes on camera. I think that's something completely next level. And I, I don't know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to put that out, at least at least the extreme stuff. So I'm going to take a look at this now. All right. So the officer, he's running with the gun. and It's another body cam, a different body cam. All right. All right, so there's blood. The dude's on the ground. He doesn't seem like he's responsive. They handcuffing him right now. Oh, 
you can see he's not there. Like the dude is out. Handcuff. He's not responding to any questions either. Shot two. Huh? You shoot? Yeah. You. And they shot at us too, right? One. I shot at the car after it almost hit you. All right, so that was the video there. It's unfortunate. I mean, from what they're saying, he shot at them. If that's the situation, unfortunately, police out there, they have to treat these situations with the same level of extremity that they, well, extremity, I mean, the same level of intensity that they get presented with, you know? So, I mean, it's just unfortunate, man, you know? No one benefits from a situation like that. People, Everybody loses, and it's it's sad. But if there's one thing that I can say for a fact, you, you cannot test your luck with fucking cops man i mean especially in a intense situation like that i know a lot of police officers i know a lot of people in the service know a lot of people who you know wear the blue and they got to put their lives on the line every single day of their every single day you know every single hour there's some kind of risk that can happen they're not trying to gamble with their own lives and you shouldn't either if a cop comes around and there's some sort of wild situation going down you make sure you are completely subservient fuck your pride fuck your manhood your dignity fuck everything put all that bullshit to the side and and be subservient to that officer you are not trying to walk away from that situation with anything missing you're trying to be alive or healthy you know dogs don't play around with that a lot of people that i feel like a lot of people when they're in situations like that they try to man up they try to oh i know my rights so i'm trying to you know boss up on you i'm not about to be pushed around by some fucking pig or whatever you know like no i'm not saying all cops are like that because if you do, that's sort of saying, like, I feel like the logic that people have against, oh, fuck the five, oh, fuck the, the pigs, the cops, or whatever. The same logic that you use to generalize all cops in a certain reign of behavior is the exact same one that they use to generalize all niggers as fucking animals back in the day. You know what I mean? Like, you cannot overgeneralize an entire group of people by the actions of a few. And it's definitely the actions of a few. So many people in the blue I know are cool ass. N a lot of my niggas, for instance, a lot of my boys who wear the beads with me, my college boys, they're they're officers now, and they don't do none of that bullshit that the news be talking about, that they be portraying and all that. A lot of officers I know, I grew up with these niggas. They're my boys. So no, don't use the same stupid ass logic, which is like how people generalize a bunch of fucking different people you know not just ethnic groups like blacks and you know indian people no 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 it's it's that's a that's a bad mentality you have to judge each individual for who they are as a person themselves with their culture and like that's them that's not all people that fall under that specific like designation or whatever you know but you know that's just my thing obviously if those if you only have like a if you like the thing is is that a person who lives in a small town they'll have someone who's in a certain minority group and they'll be like oh that person's an asshole fuck all people in that minority group that's the wrong logic to take man you you can't judge them all there's plenty of you can be an asshole regardless of what you look like you know what i mean um regardless of if it's a, a body color or if it's a badge that you wear if it's a profession if it's a, if, if, if it's uh you know whatever it is you know don't want to generalize you know um but yeah this is my friend is in the nypd etica yo i know bro so many people i know in the nypd good outstanding people the point of it all is to one not push your luck because you never you never know in general with anybody but especially with cops some i mean not i'm not saying all but a few cops some people in general just have struggle they have issues internal issues they try to flex on other people this is not a cop exclusive thing this is a person thing ex in general they want to flex on people they want to push power over people and it's it, and they put that priority ahead of everything else pride is an unfortunate thing man it takes a lot of people out way more than you would think but um you know this this was a a wild experience this is something to really remember watching um body cam footage though to be able to have that I'll definitely say that it's a plus. You know, it gives you the whole story. You see all the information laid out for you. Uh, it can be extreme, but you know, it's definitely necessary. Um, what we were looking at, or if you're just joining me right now, we have been going through some extreme topics on the stream. 
and it is sort of crazy because the first few up until this very moment have been stuff regarding real world sensitive issues um things that you know you don't want to make light of it's stuff that our society still struggles with today what we have recently been looking at are death row offenders people in texas who have been killed or you know rather executed for horrendous crimes in their last words and all that and this list is actually updated to even yesterday the last person execution number 450 excuse me 550 550 550 I'm, I'm my bad my head is a little scramble 546 what well, took place on the 18th so what i'm curious about i mean this is i don't know is 546 a big number or a small number in terms of executions how far back does this list go is it possible for us to check it okay actually they have number one here so last updated january 19th 2018 when was this first offender done let me see here. So this is Charlie Brooks Jr. When was he executed? Let me see. I, I don't remember where to go to for um, the exact date. He was born on 19, 1942. Um, discharged. Uh, okay, let me see. Maybe it has his last statement. Maybe that's where they talk about it. Last statement. He was executed in 1982. So is that when they started counting down? The offenders? Do you feel in charge, Etika? I mean, not too much, I mean, to an extent. Um, who is your favorite Doki Doki character? I like, I, I honestly like, um, well, I mean, Sayori is really, really nice, but I I think, I mean, Monica is such an obvious choice, right? She really is. Like, I don't want to just jump to the obvious, but, you know, Sayori or Monica, I guess. Mon Monica is awesome, but everybody loves Monica, right? But damn, yo, Chatty Phantom is saying, what's popping though, man? Now, you know, going through some shit, bro. I'm about to see right now. So they started keeping track of this shit around 1982, right? So what I'm curious about now, what's one of the youngest ages that we can spot on this? Death Row seems to be, okay, so here we go. We have someone here who is actually, a, I'm about to be this person's age. Someone who is 28 years old at the time of their execution. This is someone by the, wow. 28 years old, someone by the name of Punchai Wilkerson. Date of birth, um, the 15th of July, 1971. He was 20 years old when received. So even though he was executed at the age of 28, the dude is, um, he was apprehended for this crime that he did at age 20. No, age at the time of offense was 19. What does a 19-year-old do to get the death penalty in Texas? This was in somewhat of an earlier age. Well, I mean, not er age, but, you know, an earlier time. Was discrimination part of this thing or no? Convicted in November 19... Wait, convicted in the November 1990 robbery. I was just born that year. And shooting death of Chung Myung Yi, a Houston jewelry store clerk. Wilkerson reportedly watched co-defendant Wilton Bethany buy pieces of jewelry at Royal Gold Wholesale 9889 Harwin then returned with a pistol and shot Yi once in the head. Following his arrest, police found that Wilkerson had committed three additional burglaries, three auto thefts, and had shot four other people in two separate drive-by shootings. Prosecutors also claimed that Wilkerson was a party to attempted capital murder when another store clerk was shot with a shotgun. Asian male. Jesus Christ. This dude's this dude at 19, bro, he didn't give a single fuck. Someone said this sounds like a GTA story. Legitimate, bro. Damn. Etika got all the special bits in the Doki Doki Literature Club. This dude was a bad dude, man. Like no no actual like, you know, oh bad means good. Like this dude was fucking twisted bro 19 it's always surreal for me to see people far younger than me i'm 28 well i'm 27 this dude was 19 now considering he was arrested at 19 well he was 19 when he did these crimes he was executed almost 10 years later does that give a change of perspective or ideas or what did he really say 
at 28. Let me see here. Hold on a second. I, I just had him there. I messed up. I, I think I lost my placement. But one thing I can do is pawn chai. Pawn chai. Okay, here we go. What was his last statement? What did he say? Last statement. He declined to make one. Damn. That's crazy, bro. To see what someone said. There's another person here. San Miguel Jesse. Another guy, young, 19, when he was um, arrested. Age at the time of offense, 19. Convicted in the January 1991 robbery and murder of 28-year-old Michael John Flynn. Flynn was one of four people shot to death during the robbery of a Taco Bell restaurant. Listen, I don't know what it is, but th this is probably out of taste, but... God damn, man. Taco Bell is definitely not worth getting fucking robbed. How much money do you think they have in those ATMs as is, bro? You're not getting much out of that, bro. I don't get what the motivation was. How much money do you truly get from something like that? A robbery of a Taco Bell, nigga? Uh, if you're going to rob somewhere, I mean, damn, bro. If you're going to really put your life at risk, do rob something crazy. Why are you going to... For what? Like what? How much money could you really get out of those ATMs? Like five hundred to a thousand dollars? Not worth your life, bro. Not worth your life in the slightest, man. I don't know. A fucking Taco Bell. Do you guys believe this shit? Taco Bell is a bad idea. Rob Subway. <laughs> San Miguel and accomplice Jerome Mike Green, a part-time employee of the restaurant, forced Flynn, the restaurant manager, and employees Theresa Fraga, sixteen and her cousin Frank Fraga into a walk-in freezer after taking an undisclosed amount of cash from the safe Sun Trang Nguyen, a, fen, a friend from Fargus, a friend of the Fargus, were um, sitting in the vehicle outside of the restaurant by the accomplices and forced into the freezer with the other three victims. San Miguel shot all four at close range. He and Green were arrested while fleeing the scene. Teresa Fraga was seven months pregnant when killed. Where does it go to such an extreme? Wow. That's so wild. You were already robbing the place. There was no need to actually take the lives of the people working there. You put them in the freezer and then you shoot them to death? An undisclosed amount of money. I sort of wish that it told you how much these guys were doing this for. It seems like so unwarranted. Like, what was the need for it? And... Let me see here. It's it, Let's see what the last statement was. Okay, here we go. Date of execution was June 29, 2000. Be strong, brother. Be strong, my brother. Be strong, mom. It's going to be all right. I love all of you, and don't forget that. Ironic, isn't it? I'm a cross. You'll take care of each other. I'll be watching over you. Thank you, Donna. Yes. Jesus. It's kind of surreal seeing what they're saying, bro. Fuck. All right, we're gonna do, we're gonna look at one last one and then keep it moving. This is some extreme level shit, bro. Like this this is something wild here. Uh, I think the stream did get age restricted at this point because you know we're talking about some we're talking about some crazy shit. Did it get age restricted or no?